good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good everything from all the different time zones and uh, future time. Ooh. Um, so I'm in my little room here. I've collected a whole bunch of devices. I've got about eight here. Uh, the original Steve Jobs Next machine. Well, not original, but one of them. A couple of uh, Macs, uh, lots of Newtons. Uh, yeah, mostly Macs, everything. So a couple of Raspberry Pi projects as well, because those makes it kind of current and nice. So um, I wanted to share with you how to um, actually share your notes from Evernote to, to Evernote from uh, your Newton uh, 120, uh, yeah, message page 120, message page 130, uh, the message page 2000 and 2001, um, not from the eMate, but I do have that one as well. So I'm going to cut to slides here to take a look, and then we're going to have a demo of how we do that. And also, I forgot, I will also show you the demo on, on the Einstein. I love Einstein. I have used my Newtons every day for work and for journaling and stuff, so um, this became very important. And Evernote is the choice of kind of archiving notes because you can word search, as you could do in the Newton. And uh, some of the brains of, uh, you know, Newton went into Evernote, so... Uh, that was my platform of choice and it's got a green icon. So how can you not love that? So I'm going to go ahead and share a presentation here. Everybody can see that. Is that right? All right, so sharing uh, saving Apple Newton notes to Evernote and I've got a couple of different examples here So we'll go through the slides first of all for the uh, kind of the original series uh, those you need to connect physical connections uh, so I've got a message pad uh, 120 or 130 that needs to have like Apple Talk to an Asante sort of bridge. And then I've got my G3 PowerBook that, uh, sorry, PowerBook, uh, G3 uh, machine there, Power Mac. Or I also have the setup upstairs with a Dell. So if you Windows people, you, that works as well. Next slide, we'll take a look. So if you want a more complex Apple network, by all means, do it. Um, I have it all in this little room here, which is crazy because you've got your Newton. I've got, a, a, I think, a power, power book or something down there. And these other links that are sort of, I don't know if the cursor, I can't really show it here. But anyway, uh, those are called local uh, talk or Apple talk. I think local talk. It's basically a twisted pair like RJ11 that connect to the Sante through the... Um, uh, the Apple sort of DIN connector, and then you've got your network that runs through, which is sort of like just twisted pair. Uh, and I got that sort of all the way through. It's funny because trying to find actual TV connectors or whatever uh, cable is kind of a challenge. So I had to go to a bunch of uh, stores that, uh, you know, thrift stores or whatever. All right, so let's create a note in message page 120 or 130. So you draw your note. Um, as you can see, I'm doing some Bible study on my uh, Newton. So you draw your note in your message page 120 or 130. Then you open the Newton toolkit on the Apple Newton message pad. Uh, you may need it on the host as well as what we saw yesterday, how to uh, sync it to the device. Click on the inspector, uh, the Apple Newton message pad, and also click on the inspector in the Apple Mac. And then you've got a connection. So I'm going to demo that later. Hopefully it hasn't lost its Apple Talk connection. Next slide is you take a picture of the Newton. So you go into the uh, toolkit, uh, you take a picture, uh, which is a real neat feature, probably not uh, what uh, people intended when they're supposed to be programming, not just screenshots, but you do that. And then you open up something like a graphics converter, uh, something to change it to a JPEG. Uh, and then you save that picture with clipboard as a JPEG. And then you email it to Evernote. So if everybody that knows Evernote, how you email an Evernote to actual folder, is you got your title, reminder, notebook, and a tag. You put that in the subject line, and Evernote does its woo, amazing thing, and it shows up in your notebook. Um, so the requirements for that is a Mac computer with a classic software, an Asante network card, uh, Apple Newton serial connector cable, Newton connection utilities, local talk adapters, and then some telephone wire. PC requirements are similar. Uh, you've got a machine with a serial port, Hard to find these days. Apple Newton serial connection with a DIN 9. Uh, virtual PC or a virtual box or something on Windows to run Windows 98. It doesn't like XP. XP is too fast, which is funny. <laughs> and then your network connection utilities. 
All right, going on to the next one, which is creating a note in message pad 2000 and 2100. This is great because you don't need any physical connection. So you create your notes on uh, Apple Newton on your message pad. Physical connections are one of these wonderful PCMCI cards, uh, your wireless, and then I've been using sort of the old but wonderfully dependable uh, sort of Apple Express that's shown there. So what you do is you fire up a picture shooter and you take a picture of the screen, get the whole screen, choose Evernote in your email, and then your subject line at Apple Newton Notes, which is my uh, sort of folder where I put everything. Email it to Evernote, there's a graphic of it again. And uh, so your requirements for that one is pretty much an internet, the network card. There's a couple of network cards and also there's just a couple of packages you have to load in order to get the Wi-Fi working. A simple mail, a screen shooter, GIF server, as well as one of the packages you need to send the pictures. And then there's the Newton internet. So we'll make this available. Uh, we won't talk about all these steps, but those are the steps. You have to do them in order, they do not work otherwise. All right, and the last but not least, uh, my personal favorite, because I use this every day for work, is create notes drawing on the iPad, Einstein, uh, and uh, physical connection is basically your Wi-Fi. And uh, you know, then you take a screenshot, which you can do with the iPad, and uh, you open up Evernote and basically get it from your camera roll, done. So pretty easy that one is. So here's, here's a shot of Evernote. So this is where you finally get all your notes, your thousands and thousands of notes from your different generations of your Newton, and you can search them in Evernote, yes. Of course, if you have the paid version, which I like because I've got 100,000 notes. But yeah, look, I look for the word Newton, and I got it in the M130, and uh, got it also in uh, the iPad, so Einstein. So there you have it. I will stop sharing and then ask for some, uh, if there's any questions, I can probably go to the, the demo, um, if that works. Do you want to do questions, some questions first, and then go to the demo? Mark? I can do the demo if we're ready for that. Just wanted to make sure that everybody, <laughs> I, I know only in 15 minutes, so I ripped through that as fast as I could. So, uh, 10, 15. yeah. And I will now stand up and I will sort of maybe stop sharing this video so you can see. And then if we can share on. Yes, so we were later. So let's see. I don't want, I want to still, everybody can still hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. All right, so I'll back out of my room here so I can uh, actually get some space here. So here's a, here's a crazy look at uh, what my wife lets me do is uh, <laughs> having some fun in my room here. I've got old, uh, I have to accentuate this one. I still love this machine, the original Next, or uh, one of them from uh, Steve Jobs. And uh, yeah, I got a couple of Newtons on the wall here. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, yeah, Star Trek memorabilia. Got some uh, Doctor Who stuff going on. And uh, anyway, let's get to the demo, shall we? One interesting feature, if you're ever using this, you can always put your holder, kind of just, you know, pick it up at the dollar store, where you go. <laughs> All right, so if we're ready to go, we are gonna take this note and we're gonna actually wirelessly transfer it. If I can see the screen while actually demoing, and uh, we'll do that, we'll beam it over, which is kind of cool. So I've got it set up to actually beam over. And then we're gonna receive it over here. Look at that. Gotta love when a demo works, eh? And uh, this is the M message page 120, no backlight. So that's why I had to put kind of an LCD so I can see the screen. And then we'll take a look that we've got actually the uh, Newton Toolkit still connecting. It is, look at that. Apple Talk is still alive. So we've got Apple Talk kind of going through here, like I said, going all the way through, spinning through, and then the real kind of show showcase is right there, which you can barely see it, but that's the Asante sort of thing that makes all those uh, Apple Apple Talk to, to uh, TCP IP, which is great. So we'll come on over to uh, the Mac. This is a classic Mac setup, and we've got already the uh, Newton Toolkit open up. So what we're gonna do right away is we're gonna take a screenshot. And that's just magic. And then we have what's called a graphics converter. So we're gonna open up that. And we'll take a picture and basically new from clipboard. 
and voila! Look at that. You've got my Star Trek uh, graphics or whatever. Whatever I did on the message page, 130 transferred to 120, and away we go. So now what we have to do now is actually save this guy as a JPEG, which I'm going to do here. And then we move on over to our mail package. And new note, Evernote, if I can even read my screen there. And then we'll just do this as a test. Attach our document. There we go. Send now. So that's now going to send a message to uh, over here, which I've got to pull up the other mouse. There we go. So there was our test message. So there we've got it actually showing up in uh, Evernote. So that is pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so next I'm going to show you a demo on how to do it. And I'll pull it out of just thin air. I just love it, having just sort of hiding these things here. And uh, I was sort of making notes as I was watching the video. Um, I didn't include everybody's names. I kind of uh, got sidetracked because our conversation was amazing. But uh, basically on the message pad 2000 or 2100, whatever you want to do, open screen shooter. And we'll take the whole screen. And we will send it to Evernote. Send it now, please. And it's going to send it. This is so satisfying when you see um, sort of the page where it kind of uploading. So I'm using Shaw in Canada here and we've got uh, a connection here. So we've got that going on. And uh, there you go, then it's gonna check for mail. Then it checks for mail. We come back over here to I've uh, got too many things here. <laughs> Evernote. And voila! We've got that on Evernote. And uh, I guess last but not least, we could share how to do it on Einstein. So I'll just put this here for a second. As we remove the one message pad and take out the other one. <clears throat> All right, so there we have it with the Apple Pencil. And uh, let's take a look personal notes. I was trying to figure out uh, some Pythagoras stuff. Let's see if I've got anything more interesting here. Oh, there, we saw that before. But basically, you take that, a screenshot of that, and then you open up Evernote and send it, and it'll go. Um, I won't demo that because I need four hands to do that. But I shall put this down and set up my other video. Sorry about the shakiness there. All right. So, am I back on the other screen, maybe? How do I get back to the other screen? Do I pin my video? Oh, there we go. So, I just thought I would ask if there's any questions. Very good presentation, uh, Mark. Did I get it in time? Look at that. I was. I'm used to working in IT where you get a little pocket of time of someone, you know, CEO or whatever, and you're gonna rip through it. Uh, so there you go. Everything worked, I was very impressed. Yes, it's Apple, right? It always works, no. <laughs> so questions, Forrest, I see you have a question. All right, I should probably open up the chat window and take a look. Yeah, yeah, right? Okay, there we go. Good morning, everyone. 
Hey, Mark, can you show us the slide uh, just before you showed the uh, requirements for the MP2100? Because I was trying to screen capture those uh, and I missed the one just, uh, no, it's on down. It's the last one before you had system requirements. So keep going. Uh, no, oh, keep 2100? Going. It's on down. Uh, I think that the one, the one above that one, Mark. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Yeah, oh, that I, just, was I, was, there. I was screen capturing all these and I, I, I could not get my fingers on there quick enough to get that. So, okay. Thank you, Mark. That's it. It's all right. Uh, I want to mention. Great, great, great presentation. Men Mark. Oh, thanks. I want to mention that Mark sent me a PDF with his presentation, so I'm going to put uh, that PDF on the website later with uh, other sources from the presentation. So everybody can go back to this and check the uh, configuration, etc. And I also made a YouTube video in case everything failed, like having like two or three, you know, sort of backups because technology, we all love it, but sometimes it fails and yeah, it's, it's embarrassing. That's true. Uh, Steve. Oh, jacket. My jacket says, uh, what is that, the, the TARDIS or whatever? Anybody know that uh, Doctor Who, right? So that's sort of completely not Newton, but uh, still pretty cool. Um, I've got my own little TARDIS I can zip into if I get into trouble, right? Travel back in time. Yeah, it's bigger on the inside. Definitely, this this room is uh, wow. You know, my I have probably more electricity and outlets running through this room than I have in my entire house because I've got I have uh, four uh, power bars connected to a couple of circuits, and I, I shut it off at night because I uh, I'm scared something will blow up or something. I had some interesting feedback because if you don't have stuff grounded, then it's so I uh, had to sort of figure that out. Uh, we have a question from Brandon that says, uh, what is the name of the clock software on the eMate 300 in the background? Yeah, what is that one? Um, which I don't actually know. I probably can put it in the chat window later because I, uh, I put them all on my, my Newton so I can actually, you know, sit here and tell time with just kind of looking at it. But I'll, I'll, I'll text that later. And Steve, I think you had a question. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, first off, great presentation. It's always nice when things work on a demo. <laughs> um, so I, I assume you could do something similar with the eMate, just with some, you know, understanding of whatever software version that's running. Yeah, I think the eMate the difficulty I had was there's only one slot for a card, so you're you're limited because you could put the Wi-Fi, you know, slot in the card, or if you're doing hardwired, yeah, it definitely would be the exact same thing, right? So the Wi-Fi is limited, but yeah, if you do through the hardwired, um, and then you've got the ability to switch, you know, whichever cable you've got, right? Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, it's um, Ronnie here. You showed me the, you showed the iPad um, with Einstein on it. Which, which version of the of iOS are you running there? The, the most current one. So that is like an iPad mini. Um, and there was one version that was pretty stable. And I, I kept a copy of it because if, if Einstein breaks something, then I, so I put, I kept the gold copy. Um, I can try and email that sort of where it is or the GitHub. I don't know if they've got archive version or, or we can put one of those online or I don't know. I, I can, I think I can also try it on my, my iPhone, the latest version, because that should still work. Um, maybe that's a question for Matthias. Okay, thank you. Doug in Las Vegas. Mark, good job. I've got IT background, so I know you put a lot of prep into that. That's very well done. Can you share any insights or hints or tips or secrets on where to go to for picking up hardware nowadays? Uh, yeah, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, eBay is your probably best bet. Uh, I've done some stuff on eBay. I've also picked up um, 
Facebook has some stuff, like if you look there, as well as Kijiji, like if you've got something like that. I also logged into some site in the United States. I did a search, right? And I found the Asante box particularly, um, and I couldn't get it anywhere in Canada. So I, I, I emailed the person, I said, if we set up a deal to like ship it, um, you know, not on the site, but like through whatever, like personally, I'll pay for shipping because I wanted it, right? Because that Asante box, like without that, no, no magic happens, right? And she said, yeah, sure, set it up, you know, like I'll figure out how much it's gonna cost. And then I, I threw in a couple of bucks for her time and then, you know, I got that one. That one's the most important. And then, like I said, if you want like telephone wire and stuff, they don't, they don't, you can't even get that at like, uh, you know, regular tech stores now. So I had to go to like uh, Goodwill and, um, <laughs> you find gems like some sometimes you can find some stuff there through the thrift stores right and this might be a little bit too much for the little time slot that you have but can you talk a little bit about ftdi and how it replaces the asante ftdi what's you mean ftp or something no, FTDI, that's the chip that goes in the serial cable to kind of sidestep the Asante so that it does the communications. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know about that. That would probably be someone else, maybe with hardware. Okay, um, I'll, I'll figure that out some other way. Yeah, raise it in the chat room and somebody else that knows it. Thank We're you. Slack. If we have a hardware Slack page too, that would be a good idea. I have a question for you. Sure. Um, what uh, service provider do you use for your email, for your Newton email? Yes, and that is also, I, I forgot to tell you about that one. You have to, it's Shaw. So I'm in Canada, I have Shaw, and I think in Eastern Canada, there's uh, something starting with E. Anyway, you have to make sure that it's uh, not encrypted or like not, uh, uh, because it doesn't, it doesn't do SSL, right? I can't figure that out. So there is a Google search that I did to try and figure out, you know, and then I talked to someone at Shaw. Shaw's like just bare bones. They're like the original since, you know, the TVs, coax, like it's, they still have all their old technology. And I told them, I said, don't ever remove that because I wouldn't be able to communicate with the internet. Um, I think there was the Newton City or something that was supposed to also be a, a, like an email thing where you could send because that's the biggest thing. You can receive no problem, but it's sending, right? Right, right. I am, have never got it successfully set up with the modern, like um, when my ISP used to do the unencrypted stuff, then it worked fine. But now I'm out of luck. So I was curious how you were doing it. Yeah, so Shaw, you're in Montreal, right? Right. Kogado Col or? Kojiko Col is, I don't know if they're here. Yeah. Uh, they're Ontario. <laughs> That's the kind of Shaw equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, I think you had a question. Uh, yeah, I think because, uh, Mark, uh, uh, do you know the N NCX uh, software? So you can connect uh, your Newton uh, on the, with a the modern computer by the software. It's a Newton connection. I, did, you use, yeah. did you use it before? I, I had a cable. Uh, there was a not not one or something dot the website since gone but i got i had a cable and i still have the cable but i don't have the driver so i um and i did i successfully do that you know but i, I, I don't know where that guy is but anyway that one connected to like a like a osx oh i don't know maverick or something like that i think you can still do it like if you go to amazon and you get sort of the Oh, what is it? Serial to USB and then get the drivers loaded. Cause once you get that going on, then there is a connection that works. Um, right. But other than that, yeah, you're stuck in classic mode. You're right. Yeah. Uh, I'm asking because I'm, I'm using, and I actually uh, put on my website a few information about this. I'm using your green cable. So it's a FTDA cable, that kind of, uh, so that cable is really brilliant and I make a kind of uh, um, web page about the information about this because that cable is brilliant because you don't need any drivers. So you just oh. plug in that cable and it's working on the modern, on the modern Mac. Uh, I ask for NCX because uh, 
uh, I think that uh, that application have also um, ability to take the screenshot from uh, Newton. So do you think that would be a similar way to your method to, to oh, achieve yeah, that? For sure. Yeah, right. uh, any method, like I said, Evernote does its uh, searching feature or whatever. So it searches through fonts that it recognize. So obviously like if it's text to a uh, handwritten to text that will recognize it. So any picture we can get into Evernote, then you'll be able to search it all the time. I'd be interested to see that and I'll try that later after the conference if you share that. I just want to note a couple of comments here. Um, I won't be able to get to them all, but uh, Time Warner in the States still offers unencrypted email. Marissa of uh, Newton Talk, uh, sorry, newtoncity.org, she has uh, an email service. Um, Earthlink non SSL apparently works. Um, and also, this, this comment for all the Star Trek fans. Uh, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra, September 1991. Good. That's a shout out to you, Mark. Uh, and we still have a couple minutes for questions if somebody wants. No question. Everything was clear. Crystal, crystal, crystal clear. <laughs> I have one question actually. Um, do you have a developer account so that your Einstein on iPad works after seven days or the limit, whatever it yes. is? Yes. Um, so I was diligently every week kind of like recreating it and doing that. And then um, I'm 47, so I kind of forgot the whole procedure and you can literally wipe it and it doesn't work anymore. And then you can't take notes for the next day on Monday. So I bought the, the developer edition um, I think in Canada it's 119, which sort of the hopes maybe to be, like I am a developer in my work, like I, I work as a, in analytics and SQL and I'm a developer, so I should be developing. So it's kind of like this prodding to do it. Um, but I figure I get so much use out of the iPad. Like it's, it literally is my new Newton and it doesn't, like my, my the issue I had why I stopped using the other ones, because I, I used it for years with, in my work, was that I couldn't see the screen and you're just, you know, and the iPad is big and it's like, whoa, you can see it and stuff. And, and with Einstein, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. Like it's fast, it's, it, it, everything works. Like it's really, my only complaint is only eight megabytes. So I have to keep saving all these uh, image files or whatever. So if we can figure out a way to get like a, a virtual PCMCA, like, you know, storage thing, then I can keep all my years of, you know, um, incidentally, I didn't say this, but uh, with Matthew's help that when he uh, was able to bring the sort of serial connection, I was able to actually take all my notes from all my different generations of Newtons <clears throat> and bring it into the iPad because I could actually bring it all in. I had to bring it into different images, but at least I have it all there. I don't know if I can even demo that because that is phenomenal. So uh, hats off to you, Matthias, because uh, you've saved me like crazy. Um, so if I open up in the iPad, so as you can see, you know, you've got the, the Newton Einstein there. And what I did to, to not, because you have to keep the name the same. So I had to actually keep kind of like these different sort of folders of my uh, different things. So for instance, the message pad 130, those are all my notes and I can just open that up and then I've got, uh, you know, all my notes. I think I have about a thousand notes. So wanted to keep it all kind of in one device. And I'm working IT and I know about backups and I freak out. So I want to back up absolutely everything and take good notes so I can recreate stuff when you have a disaster. Amazing. Uh, Doug, you have a question? I do. Uh, even though you're calling it a screen capture, it, it seems to be an intelligent screen capture because you're not just grabbing pixels, you're actually grabbing intelligent text connected to it behind it because you can actually do the search for the text and maybe we need to have a different word besides screen capture to clue everybody into the fact that there is that text content that's grabbed behind the scenes can you address that a little bit please um i think the magic sort of happens in Evernote because it uh, has an engine. If you're paid service anyway, it goes through all your PDFs, your images, your pictures, everything. 
and it'll search for words. So I think it's a process that runs in the background or something. And then you can actually, and I've saved my bacon many times because I'm looking for a certain, where in the world was that receipt or whatever? And it'll, it'll actually have it all scanned through. So the, the kind of magic happens on the Evernote side, which I think is still a derivative of the work done in, in, Einstein, uh, in Newton. So that's why it's a fun place, you know, like the new kind of online Newton or whatever. Great. So uh, that's the end of the time, but we have a 10 minute break now, I think, Powell, is that, is that right? 10 minute break? Yes, yes, that's correct. Uh, so uh, the program is on my screen. I'm gonna maybe uh, spotlight this. Yeah. Good. And so. then Jake Bordens is gonna be up next with the mysteries of the internal serial slot, which you guys got a taste of yesterday. Yes, nice. Um, Matthias uh, posted in the text, the Android Alpha version of Einstein is up. Please give feedback if you try it. So the link is there. And We'll That's what I'm doing with my 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, Mark, uh, thank you very much for that presentation. That was really awesome. And I your, uh, and your uh, Doctor Who booth is really great. Oh, we thank you. Yeah. Applaud, we would probably applaud. My, my, we spend 20 hours making that book. That's ridiculous, eh? Time with your son, though. It's good. <laughs>